quickly that it's not just <clears throat> them that's struggling, that each one of us is struggling in some way, shape, or form. But it's good to know that God loves us so much. It might be the middle of the night that he puts you on somebody's heart, somebody's mind. But I know that so many people have cried out and prayed for me. I know that. And I'm sure they have for each one of us that's sitting here. I just thank God for his amazing grace, his mercy, his love. Can't say enough about him. Yeah. 
Sometimes I think, you know, I get to sit around pitying myself like Elijah was one time. He said, Lord, I'm the only one serving you, but I, 
you know, I sit around sometimes and get to pity myself, and I think, well, Lord, I can look around, and anywhere I look, I can see somebody that's suffering worse than my child. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I thank God this morning that he's given me the privilege to be in his house this morning and give him praise and glory this morning. Yes. And I thank God for everything that he does in this walks of life. And I thank yes. God for so many things that he's done for me this week. And I look at look around and our world seems like it's falling apart and there's no hope, but Bless you know, Lord. my hope is in Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's not in this world. And I thank God that I know him this morning because I tell you. People, time is drawing nigh. You say, well, Brother Jerry, I've heard that all my life. Well, I'll assure you one thing. My salvation is nearer today than the first day that I believe. You're closer home today than you was yesterday. And if you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to read a few verses from Mark chapter uh, 9. And I want to take my message from that this morning. I was laying there, I don't know, two or three o'clock this morning, couldn't sleep. And, and God laid this on my heart and God began to make me realize. And I guess uh, if I was saying the title of a message this morning, it'd be unbelief is a stopper. Bless you, Lord. It's a stopper to all things that unbelief is. And if you have your Bible, chapter 9, verse 14, he says, And when he came to his disciples, in Mark, uh, he said, When he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and described a question with them. And straightway all of the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluting him. And he asked, Describe what question ye with them. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh he, him, he tareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pinneth away, and I speak to thy disciples, that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, he the spirit tired him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed and foamed. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes it hath, oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us Jesus. and help us. Jesus. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Amen. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, believe. I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Amen. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and ripped him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. Insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? He said unto them, 
this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Our most and kind and righteous Amen. Heavenly Father, God, help us to see your word this morning for what it be, Lord. And help us, God, to grow in your wisdom and knowledge, Lord. I'm nothing this morning, Father. I just use, Father, you use me in a way that's pleasing to you, whatever it may be. God, I thank you for the song that's been sung this morning to go out and to touch hearts and lift up the hearts of those that are here this morning. God, even my heart, Lord, has been lifted up, Father. And God, I thank you, Lord, for each and every time, God, that I seem to get down and out, Lord, somebody comes along, and God, you send them, and send a word, Lord, or something that will lift me up. God, and I'm so glad in the day we're living in, Lord, that, Father, we realize, God, so many times what a wonderful life we've had, Lord. And God, I realize today, Father, I couldn't have had a better life than I've had for 68 years, Lord. God, I look around, people have problems on their hand, God, and I realize that you're the father of problem solver, Lord, and God, but we must have faith, Lord, and trust in you this morning, God, more than anything in this life. Father, I praise you this morning for what you mean, God, I pray, Lord, that you just anoint me to Preach your word, Lord, for just a few moments, God. And, Father, that you touch hearts, Lord, and you help us all to grow, Father, in faith, Lord. And, God, I pray, Father, that our faith begin to grow every day in our lives and realizing, God, that where our faith comes from this morning, Lord. And, God, I ask you now to go with us, leading God in the way that's pleasing to you. And, Father, I'll never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory of it all. We ask it in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. And I begin to think about this man with a son uh, that they spent many years trying to uh, do something for. And uh, he knew when he seen Jesus, he said, right there is my answer. Uh, uh, brother, I remember as my uh, uh, brother had a child born, she was had muscular dystrophy. She couldn't walk and she couldn't talk and she couldn't do anything. Uh, but you know what? The mom and the dad, they had to carry her and they had to feed her with a, at the last few uh, weeks and months that she lived they had to feed her with like an eyedropper and uh, then they had to be careful and make sure that she swallowed it uh, and they carried her everywhere that she went and, but they loved her as much as they loved the each and every one of their children uh, and they stayed with her until she was 12 year old uh, but brother let me tell you something uh, God knows when it's time to do something uh, they had went many, many times and they've done many things. They travel many miles to doctors and wherever to try to do something for her. But this father here, he had a son that was born this way and a lot of people say with an evil spirit or whatever. But brother, they are children that are born into this world. I can think of so many that I went to school with. Brother that had problems that was born with some illness uh, brother, and I begin to look around and I begin to thank God for what he's done for me throughout life. Uh, when my problems come about me and I begin to weep a little bit on my problems, my friend, uh, I look around and I see I don't have any problems. Uh, there's people that have far more problems than I've ever had. Uh, but you know what? Does the man say uh, He said, Jesus, if there's anything that you can do for us. Just have compassion on yeah, us. Yeah. Brother, let me tell you something. A lot of people I look and they say I can heal and I can do all of these things. Well, I begin to look at this last night as I laid in the bed and begin to think and to pray. Brother, let me tell you something. We have a lot less power than we think we have. Uh, and this faith comes from God. Amen. It don't come from uh, ourselves. It's not anything that we can do within Amen. ourselves. Uh, without God, we can't do anything, my Amen. friend. Uh, I had a man that asked me one time. Uh, he said, you know what? You never believed until you come become a Christian. Uh, I, but brother, let me tell you something.
something. I, I believe that they were a God in heaven. Amen. I believe that they was a God that created this heavens Amen. and earth Amen. when I was a lost man. But brother, let me tell you something. The difference is I didn't react on it, my friend. I didn't have believe that I had any need for Jesus in my life. But I believed and I had a faith. It wasn't in God. I remember growing up. Brother, people would say, you be doing something. And you quit doing it because you thought you wasn't going to get it done. And I can remember my dad saying, oh, son, you have faith. You'll get it done. Oh, son, have faith. You know what? That'll happen all right. Well, we have a worldly faith, but this faith comes from God. And you know what? That's the reason the disciples couldn't do it. Because, let me tell you something, in the book of Ecclesiastes, or in Ephesians, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Friends, that's where we lose ground when we get in ourselves. He said it is the gift of God, Amen. not of works, lest any man should boast. Brother, it's a gift of God. You know what? When Jesus prayed and he removed all of the illness from the young man, and the Bible said that he reached down with his hand and he lifted him up and he became a person that could live and do what he needed to do. Brother, let me take it from them. He said, you know what? If we believe, the old things are possible. Amen. Unbelief is a stopper to all things. Brother, when we don't believe, then that's when we tie the Lord Jesus' hand. You say, well, you know, you say you believed as a God when you were lost. I did, my friend. But I had a few problems, Brother David. I had a few problems of believing that God could do what Christian people said he could do. Amen. Well, guess what? That is an earthly faith my friend. Uh, he said this faith comes from God. Uh, it's a gift from God out of heaven, my Amen. friend. Uh, if we wanted, wanted people healed uh, and we wanted to see things done in the church, uh, we wanted to see uh, our church grow, uh, we wanted to see people saved, uh, guess what? Uh, we would have uh, more of a prayer life. Uh, we would have time comes time to come to an altar, my friend, uh, we would all gather around the altar uh, and pray for a lost and dying world. Uh, pray for the people uh, over there that are in war. Uh, the little children are walking uh, with their little toys, all they can carry or whatever it is, uh, and tears are running down their cheek. Uh, we don't know what it's like to look at our country blown apart. We don't know what it's like to see war right here in our homeland and look around and bombs are flying and missiles. We don't know what it's like. Brother, you know, ask somebody that's been over in war like Brother Eddie. It's not a good sight to have to see. I can see enough on TV. Brother, that those people are suffering. They are doing things that nobody could do. I think I don't know if I could live through that stuff. But walk away, my friend. Can you imagine walking out the door with just what you can carry and thinking everything else is gone. My life is over if I don't get out of here. But brother, let me tell you something. That's the way this man, he had a son and he tied up his life for many years. 
shoulders. He had to be right with him. He said many a times he would fall into the fire. And brother, if he had to pull him out of it, it would have burned him up. Many a times his son fell in the waters and wallowed. And if he hadn't got him out, he would have drowned it. They had to stay with him 24-7. And he said, Lord Jesus, if there's anything that you could do to give us a little relief, he said, I wish you would. He said, do you believe? I believe, he said. Lord, you know that I'm a believer. I wouldn't be asking you, Lord, it to do these things if I wasn't a believer. But you know what he said? He said to help me with my unbelief. Other words, strengthen me, Lord, and give me more faith. He said, I'm a believer, but I need more strength. I need more of your faith, Lord. That's the way I am this morning, my friend. God, I need more and more of your faith. Because I sometimes I feel the least among everybody. I look at this church sometimes and I thought about this last night. Maybe I shouldn't say a lot of things. But brother, I say what God lays on my heart. I laid there. I couldn't sleep last night. And I thought, Lord, I'm doing nothing there. God, I'm worthless. Father, help me somehow, some way. And as I prayed, and God brought this to my heart. You need more faith, my friend. Give him time, Lord. And you know what? When I came to the house of God this morning, I seen the things happen that, you know what, it encourages you again. How God can increase your faith, Brother Ruth, in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. You say, well, you ain't seen no miracles here this morning. You've not seen what I've seen, my friend. Let me tell you something. God loves those that are faithful and Amen. serves him this morning. Amen. He said to the man, Amen. he said, you know what? So he told Jesus, he said, the disciples, they tried to heal him, and they couldn't. He said, you know what? He said, this faith comes from God, Amen. and it comes from fasting, prayer and fasting. Fasting. And you know what? I begin to think about fasting. A lot of people think fasting is doing without food. There's more to fasting than doing without food. I read this and I looked it up. And the word fasting in this situation means time, it means strength comes by time of prayer. Uh, you don't go and you kneel down uh, and say, God, heal me of this disease. I've got to get up and forget about it. Uh, it comes through time. Uh, uh, you know what? Fasting is time. Uh, when we go and we steal away, Brother David, uh, and we kneel before God and we pray uh, in our closet, wherever it may be. Uh, as I said Wednesday night, my friend, uh, the best prayers I've ever had with God uh, is being somewhere uh, in the mountains. Uh, brother, I remember one time sitting up in the mountains waiting on daylight. And I began to pray. And I began to seek God. And the first thing I knew, I opened my eyes. And it was way past daylight. I didn't care. I just shouted the praises of God. My hunting days was over. I didn't care. Why? Because I come in contact with God through prayer. He met my request. And I praised him and I give him glory. Brother, the most best prayers and the best conversations.
salvation you'll ever have with Jesus is by yourself and Him. When we steal away and God sees the sincerity as He's seen in this man, He knew He was sincere. He said, I believe, Lord. I believe. But I, will you help me with my unbelief? Will you strengthen my faith, Lord? Brother, can you imagine as a father or a mother having a child that needed special care? I've known, friends, as my brother did. They tried everything, but they didn't try Jesus. Brother, let me tell you something. He told them, he said, uh, how long, how long will you stay in this state? Brother, let me tell you something this morning. You may be lost without Jesus. How long do you intend to live in this state? God said today is the day of salvation. Yes, Harden not your heart. Brother, you better get right with God while the blood runs warm in your bloody body. I think about in Acts chapter 3. Brother, you know what? They took a man and laid him at the gate daily because he was lame from his mother's womb. He couldn't walk. He had to depend upon others for a living. He begged alms every day. He reached out his little cup every day hoping to hear a little coin hit the bottom of it. But I want you to know, my friend, let me tell you how he knew something was coming his way. And brother, let me tell you, the Bible said that Peter and John, they went up to the temple in the hour of prayer. And they went there for a reason. And that was to pray and seek God. Brother, let me tell you something. The old lame man, he looked up on them. And Peter and John looked down on him. He said, look upon us. How uh, do you know what? Silver and gold have we none. He said, we don't have anything like that. But he said, such as we have. In the name of Jesus, we give thee. He said, rise up and walk. The Bible said that they raised down. They took him by their hand and they lifted him up. His ankle bones received the strength that he needed. Guess what he done, my friend? The Bible said that he went through, in other words, the house of God, a leaping and a praising God. Brother, let me tell you something. That's what's the matter with the world today. We're scared to praise God. We're scared somebody might say, look at that foolish thing. Brother, I don't care what you say about me when I'm praising God. If I take an ocean to shout or shout, I'm not going to shout just because I hope you think I want to. Brother, I want to do God's will. I want to do what He wants me to do. If it's lift holy hands and praise Him, I will. I know sometimes I may look foolish to the world, but when I'm giving God praise, my friend, I'm praising the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Brother, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us, I'll edit it this way, I'm shortly coming to a close. I think about when Jesus told them to get into a ship and go to the other side. And the Bible said, while they were gone, he went up into the mountain to pray. I always begin to read and think about that. You ever notice through the Bible, it seems like everything 
every time they wanted to meet God, they went high up in the mountain. And brother, they met the Lord. Brother, let me say to you, Jesus said that he went up in the mountain to pray. And when he came back, there was a wind and a storm was tossing the boat to and fro. And the Bible said that Jesus went walking on the water. Walking out. And they seen Jesus coming walking on the water, my friend. They said, look, what is that? Is it a spirit? Or what is it? They begin to fear. And Jesus told them, he said, fear not, for it is me. Brother, and I always like this point. Oh, Peter, you know, he loved the Lord. He never denied Jesus all of this good thing. But he said, Jesus, if it be you, bid me to come to you. Whoa! What happened to the faith? If it be you, bid me to come unto you. Jesus said, come. Come. Come out of there, Peter. And walk on the water. I'll show you it's me. I'll prove to you it's me. The Bible said that old Peter, he stepped out of the boat and he began to take a few steps on the water. He was walking on the water, my friend. And you know what? He looked around and took his eyes off of Jesus. And he said, the winds of Ulster, he began to be afraid. And you know what? When he lost his faith, my friend, when it become weak, he began to sink. Brother and Jesus reached over and he took him by the hand and lifted him up again. Amen. Brother, let Amen. me tell you something. Amen. Our church world, her faith has grown weak in the day that we're living in. If there's ever a time that we need to increase our faith, it's in the day we're living, Brother Bruce. Brother, let me tell you something. He said, Fasting, it comes with fasting. I'll tell you this, my friend. I would rather kneel somewhere. If it's in the mountains, if it's by a storm, and begin to pray and seek God in sincerity and say, God, use me, Lord. I know that time is running out. As I laid there last night, I said, Lord, I Tea. I've given you the best I know that I have. God, I don't know anything else to do. God, if it's something that you know, do whatever's best for you. God, I don't want to stand in the way of no one. God, I don't want to be a stumbling block for nobody. I'd rather see somebody else winning the praises of the Lord and see and soul saved. I'm here to say to you this morning, my friend, God loved each and every one of you. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. But brother, without faith, we can't do anything. Without faith, we can't walk. But brother, you know, people say, well, you don't have any faith. I'll say this, true and living faith comes from our Father Amen. which is in heaven. Amen. It's the faith we need. Amen. He said it don't come from you. You can't do anything yourself without the Lord Jesus. Amen. And brother, it took me a little time to understand. God take me and as a little child, Lord, mold me and shape me into what I need to be. God, I know nothing without your direction Amen. and without your wisdom. God, take me and get the hard spots out of my heart. As the potter, reshape the clay. Take me, Lord, and squeeze me, Lord. Get all of the stony places out of my heart, Lord. Soften my heart that I can be compassionate, that I can love 
love those that need to be loved, brother David, that I can do something to help those that are in need. Let me tell you something, friends. You say, well, brother Jerry, I'm young. I got a long life. I'll get right with God one of these days. Brother, I just went to a funeral of a 49-year-old young man that thought he had a long life. We don't know, my friend, what tomorrow right. holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. I'd rather Amen. know Jesus than to have the world by my side. I laid there last night, and God revelated my heart and mind. And God said the most important thing that you need to do is to serve me. Brother, this world is running out, and it's running out fast, my friend. The days of the Lord is coming, and he's coming soon. Where will you be? How long will you stay in this state? Brother, let me tell you something. Jesus loves you today. He loved me, and I don't know why. I was one of the ungodliest persons on the face of the earth, and God struck me down right there your old turkey brain and brother and pull me out of the mire clay and set me up on a solid rock and brother I've never been the same since somebody said Jerry have you ever failed every day my friend every day but I have to go back to Jesus and say Lord Jesus it's me again Lord help me with my unbelief Strengthen my faith, Lord, that I can be what you would have me to be. Brother, this is not a game that we're playing in this life. Brother, let me tell you something. If we could see one day and spend one night in what those people are spending over there in Ukraine, I'll assure you it'd change the hearts of a lot of people. It would change their direction. When you see little children crying, their little faces torn and ripped apart because they can't have no trust in the grown people. I asked a child one time about the trusting. He said, you know what? He said, the most thing I hate worse. He said, you can't trust a grown up. He been abused every which way. And I thought, my friend, we're living in a world today. As the lady said on TV the other day, she said, I don't trust my government a bit more than nothing. And she said, I hate to say that. She said, but I don't trust them. She said, I put all of my trust in Jesus. Amen. This Amen. world is going to burn. And Amen. soon it's going to burn with the rest of it. And she said, you know what? It's sad when you can't trust one another. It's sad when your government you can't trust them. They lie to you. A dollar is more important to them than someone's life. Brother, let me tell you today, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, you say, Brother Jerry, let me have a peculiar message, but I'm telling you this morning, friend, what God put on my heart last night as I laid and I tossed and I turned in my bed all night long trying to I'll come to grips with what God wants. Friend, I'm telling you right now, I know one thing and I know for sure. There's a God in heaven and there is a Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and I. We have no hope, my friend, without a Savior. And his name is Jesus this morning.
waters. He told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Let me tell you something. He said, how can a man enter in London home the second time? He said, you need to be born of the Spirit and the water. Well, let me tell you something. When the Spirit of God comes down into your heart and you're buried in the liquid grave and you're raised in baptism, my friend, you'll find that you're a new person. The old man has passed away and the new man has come. And brother, I'll say this to you today. There's none perfect brother no not none we all come short of the glory of God every day of our life but brother one thing is the difference we've been saved by grace through faith brother there's no other difference I may live in a house here you may live in one bigger over yonder it's worthless my friend as they said this this morning on TV I heard a preacher preaching he said, you know, they're trying to come to grips with a one world order and a one world money. He said, you know what? You may take all your money and put it in a box, my friend. Keep it in the house. He said, but once that happens, you can take it out and have your bonfire right. because it won't be worth anything. Right. Brother, I look for it any day. I look for it any time, my friend. But brother, let me tell you something. I'd rather have Jesus Amen. than anybody that Amen. I have. Amen. I'd rather have Jesus on my side. Yeah. I'd rather know that I've been born again. Yeah. I'm like Brother Roger Freeman. Before he died or something, he said, Brother Jerry, he said, if you ever noticed, you can ask anybody, are you a Christian? He said, I've never asked anybody in the last 10 years that said, no. He said, everybody I ask, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Where do you go to church? Oh, I go here, I go there, I do this, I do that. He said, I quit asking people, are they a Christian? He said, anymore, Brother Eddie. He said, I ask them, have you been born again? Amen. He said, that's the difference. Everybody's a Christian. He said, they'll tell you I belong to this church and I belong to that church. <laughs> Brother, I watched the paper one time when I was a pastor for Stephen and different churches around, and I looked, and they'll say, I'm a member at so-and-so church, and never was in there. <laughs> never had been in the house. They even asked some of the older people, you ever seen them people here? Nope, never did see them in this church in their life. Well, they put in the paper they were a member here. Brother, let me tell you something. You can write down anything you want. You can put in the obituaries anything you want. Yeah. Right. It's just like the money that ain't worth anything. You can take it out and burn it in a bonfire for just as good. Yeah. Brother, it's not what you want the world to know, but it's right. what God knows. That's right. So I say to you this morning, Thank the way you. the tree falls is the way it'll lay. Amen. You can put right. in your obituaries anything you want to. I used to have a little check. It was called Salvation. And in that check, it said, Mark one of these boxes so the preacher can tell the truth about you when you die. One of them is, is I'm a Christian born again and going to heaven. And the other one is, I'm going to hell. Check one of these boxes <laughs> so the preacher don't have to lie about you when he does your funeral. Mm -hmm. I've not been to a funeral in 20 years, my friend. Did anybody ever went to hell? Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. I had a nephew that died, killed a woman, both of them drunk as they could be, doped up. You know what they said when they went to the funeral? The preacher got up and said, he's in a far better place. Mm. I thought, if hell is a far better place, my friend, he's there. Mm. He never went to church in his life. He never did do anything to confess that he knows the Lord Jesus and he died drunk he said dad come get me I'm drunk as I can be his dad said get home the best way you can I've got to work tomorrow an hour later 
They knocked on his door, said, do you have a son named Justin? He said, yeah, what's he done now? He said, he's laying down the road there about two miles, dead. He had a tree at about 100 miles an hour, killed him and a woman that was with him. Oh, changes things. Changes things. I went down there that morning, and I don't tell you this to be mean. They called me crying, screaming, carrying on. I went down there at 6 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my son's dead. And his wife was saying, God took my son. It's to blame, blah, blah, blah. I said, you want to know the reason? They said, yeah. I said, look around. Look around. Everybody here is drunk, smoked up. And you wonder why that you lost your son? I remember you all telling him he needed a little more water to keep him calm. Mm. This is the payoff, my friend, That's it. of sin. They lost everything they had. The next year, she told my wife, said we snorted $90,000 of our note last year. They probably don't have $9 now. Sin will destroy you, my friend. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. How long will you stay in this state? How long? How long as they come and get us off? I say to you this morning, I tell it like it is, friend. I tell it like it is. There's two places, heaven and hell. You'll choose one or the other. It's your choice. I've heard people say, I don't know why the Lord would send them to hell. You know what sends you to hell? Unbelief. Unbelief. That's what sends people to hell. It's not because you ride a horse or you ride a motorcycle or you hunt or you fish or whatever. That's not what sends you to hell, friend. What sends you to hell is unbelief. That you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I say to you the Lord, as they say, if you're here and you're lost without Jesus, there's no better time than right now. The Bible says, Today, today is the day of salvation. I would hate to wake up in the morning lost and think I had this opportunity today to give my heart to Jesus. Wake up in the morning and the physician tells me I've got three months, six months, a year. It's only that I don't know Jesus. Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you go to? As we all stand this morning, this altar is open. He said, Come on, all things are now ready. He said, I came to seek and to save which is wrong.
You can go home tonight and you can lay down and you can say, Lord, I'm giving you up. I believe that's the whole thing for me. It's your choice. I wish I could make the decision for you, but I can't. It's a free will. Jesus could make you do it, but he wouldn't do that. He could knock the door down and come in, but he wouldn't do that. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man open, I'll come in and suck to him and him with me. It's up to you. Are you satisfied? Are you ready to meet the Lord? That's the question you have to ask yourself. The Lord might say, anyone need Jesus? Anyone need Jesus? my heart this morning. I'm giving you what God laid on my heart. I don't know anything else to say or do anymore. i just tell you about Jesus. Children, time running out. I see people suffering all over our land. The suffering is going to be over for some after a while. I say to you this morning, Appreciate each and every heart that's gathered here this morning. Appreciate the singers. Appreciate everyone that comes. Love you from the bottom of my heart. Amen. I wish I could do more than I do. I wish I could reach out and touch those that need a touch and heal them. I wish I could save people. But if I did, I'd probably be on fire at it. The Lord Jesus is not on fire. He said, it's not my will that any perish. Come on, come on, come on. So I say to you this morning, I love you from my depths of my heart. Let us all stand, shake hands, fellowship, do whatever. If they have another song we can sing, whatever. And then we'll be dismissed in the word of prayer. The altar's open. God's calling. I don't know anything else to tell you. I'm giving you my heart this morning. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Bless you, sis. Love you. Thank <laughs> you.